there is a presentation about uh, new developments, new uh, technical developments uh, in the field of uh, reporting. I want to start now and I give the floor to the Dutch Parliamentary Reporting Office, uh, to uh, uh, people of my staff. They will give a presentation. Thank you, Eras and Deru Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Henkel Eras, and over there is my assistant. And later on, vice versa, is Deru Schelhaas. Uh, before we start, uh, I enjoyed the vake very much last night. <laughs> so if everything goes well, it's because of. <laughs> and if everything goes south, it's also because of. Uh, 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 something else uh, about myself, a short introduction. My name is Henkel Jaros and I'm the quality officer and team manager with the Parliamentary Republic Office of the Dutch um, Parliament. Um, I've been working there over 27 years, so I have a lot of experience with parliamentary practice and practicalities, uh, especially regarding to reports. Because I have so much experience, I've brought uh, along a colleague who is young, energetic, and who has a lot of new and exciting ideas. So let's uh, start to learn. Uh, the title, Speech to Report, not there yet. It's a kind of phase two of a project that we started in 2017. The first presentation we did uh, about uh, automatic speech recognition was in Berlin. And this is the kind of logical follow-up. There we told about uh, what we were going to do. And now we're going to show uh, some, uh, some results. Uh, something about the title. Uh, if you saw the other presentation, uh, you may remember, or else I will be, remind you now, uh, there's something uh, different to speech to report, because normally we're talking about speech to text. And everything we want to do, our ambition has to do, uh, as regards to the speech to report uh, principle. Next slide, please. Uh, something to begin with uh, about the Parliamentary Republic Office uh, in the Netherlands. This is our workplace, shown uh, from, uh, from, from top. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we report the formal proceedings. We have a lot of history. We started in 1849. That was without me. But uh, <laughs> we, had, we had a major constitutional reform in 1848 in the Netherlands, and that was kind of the start of a really uh, parliamentary uh, democracy. Uh, we have uh, a few products I will, uh, I will introduce you to you uh, shortly. Uh, we started with our version of Hansard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. We started with, uh, with our version of Hansard, uh, uh, originally uh, black and white, uh, uh, it's a kind of, kind of magazine, and now it's uh, published within two hours on the, on the internet. The other products are more kind of modern, like, and invented or originated in the last decade. Because in the last decade we are not only publishing, but we are making things transparent. Uh, so it's a, a kind, of, kind of our job is, uh, is, is, is moving on. Uh, another aspect is that we are trying to make things more accessible. So not only showing reports on black and white, uh, with a word, a word form, a word in a double double meaning, but also uh, audio, video, subtitling, and so on. Short introduction, we have uh, developed a, a live video app called the Debat Direct. It's uh, uh, free downloadable in the Netherlands. At the moment, about uh, 85,000 people have downloaded uh, the app. It's on iOS and Android. And it gives you a choice, a choice which debate you want to follow. Uh, and all the debates are also uh, meta updated, which means there's an index, there's an agenda, and everything is shown live. I will tell you something about that later on. We have a video demand archive. Uh, it goes back to 2011. Which means, uh, means that all, all citizens are, uh, are uh, all, the, all the videos are made available to them. The videos are also uh, indexed, which means that you can uh, 
search uh, uh, on, 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 the, on, the, on the person, on the speaker, on the title, on the subject, and even on the word. Because uh, we did something uh, special with the, the bot for Mr. Video on Demand. Because in Holland, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, we are legally obliged to uh, subtitle all the video content. So the disbarment is legally obliged to, which is, is an enormous <coughs> task. With uh, the video archive, we came up with uh, something different. Uh, generating uh, subtitling can be very costly. So what we do is we already have Hangzart, which is a kind of a subtitling of very high quality, and we use ASR to uh, uh, upload it with uh, the, the, the video on demand. So it will be shown as a real uh, subtitle in the, in the, in the video. Uh, next product, uh, a live, sub, live subtitling. I mentioned subtitling for the video archive. Live subtitling is uh, a new profession for us and we started two years ago uh, with a pilot to learn uh, what we would, uh, would and could not uh, do. Uh, at the moment we are uh, live subtitling the weekly uh, question hour. Like in like the UK, a question hour where members of parliament can ask questions to, uh, to members of cabinet. Uh, the quality of the live subtitling uh, is that high that the Dutch Broadcasting Association has plans to use our live subtitling. They are affected by uh, budget costs, so it would be uh, uh, very uh, effective for them if we uh, would uh, take over the task of live subtitling question hour. Last but not least, uh, a lot of our uh, people uh, uh, can, tr can translate. So uh, the last two years uh, since we have developed this, pro this project, this is going through the roof. Everybody uh, who wants nice translations of our speeches uh, help them etc. Et Next slide please. Uh, some more about uh, the, way, uh, the way we work. This is uh, the plenary hall during a session. Uh, the members of the uh, uh, cabinet, speaker, uh, the chair, uh, the, the, the members of parliament, and dead center in the middle, the stenographers. So that's, that's the place to be. Because um, we, we, uh, we uh, only recognized it after uh, an architect did some international study and he kind of called this a shambles, a bit of a mess, because uh, there's uh, at first glance not very uh, good to see what actually is happening here. Uh, uh, we'll have to talk to Dutch. I will point to you the microphones that can be used during a session. The chair can speak. This is the speaker himself at the moment. A uh, member of the uh, cabinet can speak over here. And here are four microphones for interruptions and interjections. So there are seven points, seven places in the, the, this, uh, uh, in the, in the, the planning hall which can be used during a session. That's why we're very fond of this place, dead center in the middle. So you can see and hear uh, everything. Uh, at first glance, you can also uh, see that uh, we are using the desktop computers. For a number of years, we will be using uh, uh, a reporting supporting system, which means that our uh, workflow is completely uh, digitized. Uh, they use their screens to log in events, the start of a session, a uh, different uh, agenda point, uh, interje interjection. Uh, motions being put forward, but also uh, voting results. So they are all also logged in uh, via, via the, the screen. Uh, those, those, those logins are uh, also on the basis of time. We use XML, so all those logins are timestamped. Which is interesting because in the, the video archive, you have thousands and thousands of hours of video, and you have to index them. So we use the report that is made, the XML to index the videos, so you can easily navigate and then pinpoint uh, the exact uh, 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 sequence you want to uh, you want to see. Next uh, slide. So I just I just mentioned that the last decade uh, was a decade of innovation for us. Uh, 
state of art XML. XML stands for Extendable Markup Language, which is the data model we use with our, with our working system. The live video app, which I think is still something completely new in the parliamentary world. Uh, we developed uh, one. I don't know if there is another, is there another parliament that also uses uh, apps or applications uh, for, for, for agenda purposes uh, or something like, like this. No? And uh, the, the, the video on the mount. Uh, and the, 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 the video, the, uh, it's mentioned twice. I think that is the, the main, uh, the main, uh, the, the, the main uh, focus that is uh, that is that's, that's coming in, in light that uh, uh, the video reports and the use of video and film and footage were constantly clicking and watching videos. The same is happening in the world of hands art. We think. Back to uh, the working force. Yeah, the, 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 he's not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he's rather looking very intently at the screen because hey, everything that is happening he has to uh, he has to uh, log in. He's looking a bit a bit scared over here. Uh, I want to show you this slide because uh, uh, automatic speech recognition is about technique, but what we are trying to do is about people. Because all that innovation that we have been uh, busy with the last decade is uh, innovation in terms of products. More products, better products, uh, products that more and more people uh, uh, can, uh, can, can look at what's happening in the, the plenary hall, making things more transparent. But what can uh, technique or innovation do for uh, the workforce? Because uh, now I deal with a youngster, but I've been uh, almost 30 years working with the parliament, and that's kind of a golden problem. Our working force is aging rapidly because uh, they don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, really, realistically, you have to uh, come up with a strategy, strategy uh, 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 for health reasons. If people uh, join the force at 25 and are still there at 50, 60, they have to make long hours, long working hours in the, in the evening, sometimes at night. So you have to come up with a strategy. So maybe technique innovation can help. Now uh, back to Berlin, a different uh, silhouette from from, uh, from where we are here now. There we did our first presentation uh, called what we did last year. Uh, could easily have been the title of this presentation uh, also. Uh, and there was the first time that we used the speech to report phrase. We don't want an audio transcription, we don't want speech to text. Because in our view, speech to text isn't really helping reporters. In our experience with the, with the pilot, it's rather frustrating their work. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we did a couple of, uh, uh, we, did, uh, we tested two platforms and our conclusion was, uh, yeah, within a couple of weeks, was very clear. Speech to text, not up to a good standard for daily use, requires too much editing. And automatic speech recognition in that world, um, accuracy counts. If you've got a, a platform, an application, which is 90% accurate, uh, 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 you can use that for PR reasons. Oh my God, we made this thing, this 90% accurate. So only 10% errors remain. What in practice means that, uh, that a reporter, which we use as an ASR, gets a text product, which is 90% correct. So he or she first has to correct the 10% in mistakes, even before starting to make a report of the text, before starting editing, adding, and so forth and so forth. Everybody home? <laughs> so that brought us to a, to, a, uh, to a second conclusion that even 100% accuracy is not enough because a speech to text platform remains a speech to text platform. Even if it's 100%, you get an audio transcript, like an audio transcript of 
my speech now with all my uh, uh, sentences which are not uh, uh, correct grammatically or not I, I, I mis misspoken myself I'm not finishing a sentence all the us and the us that's not what you want to see in a report in a report uh, uh, with our standards every sentence has to make to be correct at first glance uh, you don't want readers to start two or three times at the sentence before they understand uh, what they are reading. What uh, really. Next slide, please. So, uh, what we did, uh, we started the collaboration with the Harvard University because we thought, well, uh, we, uh, uh, we are people, we are, we are working with those systems. So we have a lot of data all over about uh, what's working or what's not working, but we are lacking in the knowledge uh, about how those systems actually work. So we started working with the Radboud University, uh, the Center for <coughs> Technology, and we did uh, a project with uh, small means, 12 months, only 50,000 euros, and our uh, employees were allowed to, to spend uh, in total uh, 100 hours to see what we could come up with. And this is what we uh, wanted. Uh, we had discussions with the uh, Rabat University, they didn't know exactly what we wanted, and uh, vice versa. So our aim is a speech to report solution that supports a parliamentary reporter who writes in it, because in our practice, uh, a reporter uses a keyboard to produce a text. And the exact use case is translation of an ASR produced audio transcript in almost ready report. And uh, the word is translation. That was what was, was, was pop, came popping up in the discussion to our, our office and, uh, uh, and the, at the university. They said, oh, you're not talking about automatic speech or recognition, you're talking about translation. You're talking about translation of an audio transcript into, into uh, a report. Uh, it was called, it is called Speech to Write, our project. Uh, I'm going to uh, shortly uh, <coughs> give, give some details. Next slide, please. We have to provide them with data, and because we use XML and our uh, 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 report, uh, reporting supporting system, we have a lot of data available. So we provided them with over 2,000 hours of audio or formal proceedings. That uh, uh, sounds like much, but it's actually a year's a year worth of reports. And a normal uh, year, uh, Dutch Parliament uh, meets in about 2,000 to 3,000 hours. And that is only the formal meetings of which the PRO is asked to provide a formal report. And we also uh, provided them with a corresponding handset text file in XML format so they could make a, a, a correlation. <coughs> and they started working on two models, a parliamentary language model and a translation model. The parliamentary language model is based on over 100 million spoken words, not different words, but just audio, uh, for which was needed a minimum, minimum of 100 hours of, uh, of uh, formal proceeding uh, that we, uh, we met. And then the translation model, which is the new element uh, in all of this. The assumption is spoken word and audio files of the proceeding and with an answer are two different languages and if that assumption is correct you can start working with translation models which are readily available a lot of translation models are uh, open source so they can be used instantly for instance uh, MOSES the Harvard University uses uh, MOSES that's an open source statistical translation system and they train that system uh, that model with other Thank you very much, Hank Jan. Mm. Let me briefly walk you through how the system actually works. Once Hank Jan installed himself, 
can provide with the next slide. Um, it's based on a website from which you can upload any audio file. So we make an audio file of mostly committee meetings because they are less dynamic than plenary meetings, they are better for testing the system and my colleagues and me upload our files to this website in mp3 format so it accepts any um, readily available audio formats to upload your file and then the system comes out with an output of two different text files one is the transcript based on the ASR system and the second file is the speech to write, the text to report solution that the translation module that Rockbound University trained with our data comes up with. So it consists of automated editing decisions as if a stenographer, which is in this case the computer model look at the ASR result, the transcript, and already identified some places in the text which need some editing. So let's see how it actually works, or what it looks like. It comes up with a huge stream of text. And this we already knew on beforehand. So it doesn't di differentiate between different speakers. In this tiny piece of text, maybe three different speakers um, have their say. We don't know. So, so you just have to copy and paste this text to your um, Word file and use, this, use it as the basis for your report. Um, which can be quite confusing, but we do this. It's just a project, a research, and it's not a completely usable system yet. That's for later, maybe. Um, so this is the ASR result, the speech result, the transcript. And as you can see, the speech to report file, the second file on the website, is looks pretty similar, but when you look more, it's just a stream of text after all. But when you look more in detail, you can see that actually the translation mo module identified different parts of the text which it can change. It, for instance, recognizes acronyms. It knows that RIFIM, an institute in the Netherlands, we write in uppercase instead of lowercase. So the, the audio transcript just wrote it with lowercase. The translation module identified it and said, okay, normally you write it with uppercase, so let me do that for you automatically. Or it recognized 2016 and 2012 as um, numbers. numbers, yeah. So it uses digits instead of written out in words. Um, Volkswagen, um, of course the car brand it identified and it also found some other very peculiar parliamentary language. Um, we work in the Tweede Kamer, we write Kamer with upper case, a K, upper K and it identified it. So we were actually quite surprised with the editing decision the system automatically comes up with. Um, but of course then we have to test it in our day-to-day -day routine. Um, and let me share some findings, me and my colleagues. So we were quite impressed by the things the system I, I automatically identifies, but still this almost ready report requires substantial editing. So it's nice to have some cosmetic changes in the text, but still if you want to make it into a readable text, 
You still have to do a lot. The system won't do it for you. One thing that's also quite interesting is that okay, we um, take out quite some redundant elements in a text. Once a sp speaker repeats himself, or it starts a sentence that it doesn't completely finish or finishes in a less efficient way, we like to polish it a bit. Um, and the system actually loves to cut away information, and it cuts away quite a lot of information that we normally wouldn't, that we would want to be left in the text. It, it says it's irrelevant for me, I just leave it, or I don't recognize it as, as normal language, so let's leave it aside. So you constantly have to switch between is this relevant or not? Is the system trying to fool me? Um, or does it actually do something useful for me? Next slide. Um, so, me and four other colleagues actually work with this. And we are part of a working group, and Jan is the project leader of. Um, so, we have been testing uh, automatic speech recognition software for a while now. We know a bit about the technical backgrounds. But, and we are very curious to give it to the test now to people that don't know much about it. And maybe look for completely different things in the text. So that's what we are looking forward to do in the coming months. To share this system with our colleagues with less knowledge about ASR. Um, but of the four colleagues that work with it, we do recognize that it might take a bit less time when you already have a pre-given text to edit, uh, it takes a bit less time than typing it yourself. But, and, and it can actually allow you to focus more on the editing part of the job instead of the typing part, the processing the audio on your headphone to a typed out text. But, as I said, this parts it skips, sometimes it edits something that you actually would want to have left to the original, it frustrates and it slows down your editing process. It, um, and I see my fifth point that um, the, the sentence doesn't finish, but... The, <laughs> The um, results are actually much better when the um, speakers do not improvise. So a confused speaker is an even more confused ASR system and translation module. Uh, and that's why we decided to test it in committees mostly, which are more static. So in plenary hall there's always more attention of the media and speakers tend to be confused more easily. Committee, they often read their text out loud, their pre-written text, and they, um, we decided it was more fair to test the system in this situation. But of course, if we want to fully implement the system, it should also deliver in plenary um, context. Uh, but for now, this, this was the best way to test it. But confused ASR, even more confused. Uh, Confused speaker, even more confused ASR was definitely a finding for us. What's up next? Uh, let me call you forward and hey John to dive into some problems we faced <coughs> while carrying out our project with Rothbard University. Problems are my kind. If I uh, can, can summarize what you are saying, I can refer to the title, uh, Speech to Report, Not There Yet. We have uh, a, a, a website, uh, a web service, which is working, but which is not actually helping uh, uh, reporters to get uh, their work uh, done in a better fashion, or uh, 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 less, less, less on cost, or uh, um, faster, etc. etc. Uh, so, uh, we want to improve uh, our system, uh, we can call it problems, we can call it ambitions, 
the database size, which is limited to 2,000 hours cost, uh, is a problem because with uh, this kind of project, is, uh, the more data you have, the more data you can make readily available, the better the system works over a number of years. Uh, so the first one actually is a problem because uh, we have, I think, about 14 or 15,000 hours of data. So that's something we can improve on. Uh, the second one uh, jumps to uh, that one over there, the conclusion about more than 750,000 different words are used in part in party events. So uh, is, is, that, is that a large number or a small number? I don't know. But normal automatic speech recognition engines, the ones uh, uh, we are now working with, are only uh, capable of using 250,000 words. So that means that uh, what we are now working with is actually a kind of handicap system because it has to work with about three times as much uh, uh, words as it is capable. Uh, and what's, what's, uh, what's, what's causing uh, so much different words? That is the old parliamentary language, not my term, the scientist term. Uh, and it originates from compound language. Dutch is a compound language, which means that you can combine uh, two or three or four or five words and it's still, uh, it's still actually meaning something. And it's also a kind of a, a sport in, in parliamentary politics to use those kind of terms because uh, after, uh, after some time they are starting to become meaningless. Uh, I have a, I want an example, administratieve reduction doelstelling, which is a combination of five words and within parliament everybody knows exactly uh, uh, what the term means. But it's something that's providing problems for normal ASR. Next slide, please. Yeah. I, I want to actually add something I forgot. A very confusing thing while ed using the system, while editing with it, is that the punctuation yeah. is a real problem. Um, when the system has to guess where one sentence stops and the next one begins, <laughs> it guesses wrong in about 90% 90 of the instances. And this is of course very frustrating. While you're editing, you're looking for some kind of anchor, some point you can fixate on. And when this goes wrong, in every nine, sent uh, nine sentences you're editing, only one is right, then it's really frustrating. And this is um, a problem that the scientists say won't be fixed very easily. It's very difficult for automated systems to guess where one sentence stops and the next one begins. So, uh, we, we now know that there is uh, open source software uh, which tries to tackle that problem, the punctuation software which is not, not like normal ASR, but only does the job of punctuation. So maybe we can add that mm -hmm. to our project. And can I have the next slide mm -hmm. now, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, what's, what's next? So uh, we're trying to do some, some quick fixes, uh, some, some, some IT problems we discovered along the way. Uh, another one which is actually quite interesting, we are not only but the Rappel University wants to look into machine learning. Uh, and why? Because in the field of uh, automated translation, machine learning is, uh, uh, is proving to be uh, very capable. Uh, machine learning is about uh, uh, kind of neurological uh, networks, so systems who are trying to learn things and thinking, uh, thinking for themselves. Uh, how it actually works, nobody knows, but the results can be very impressive. And in the field of uh, 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 automated translation, the results are, are, are very, uh, very uh, promising. So that's one thing we would like to add to see if our uh, system uh, will, will improve. Uh, the third one is, yeah, like, like, like Dero said, uh, uh, you want to have a user interface which actually helps people, which, which helps their work instead of frustrating them. That's uh, something uh, completely uh, new for us. Dero showed, uh, showed how the, the web uh, interface looks. 
it's just just a, a large amount of text and uh, nothing nothing more. So that uh, we want to, uh, to to get better results in that field uh, field as well. And the latest thing is a thing we are doing uh, in practice continually, continuously. We are continuously looking at is it really useful trying all this ANSR stuff as it happens. Because our regular work has to be done on a daily basis. So if it is, is if it is only slowing us down and showing uh, no, uh, no, no, no effect, no results in the, in the sense that people uh, start working with this because they are happy with the results, uh, they don't have to uh, uh, type uh, uh, so much stuff because there are text products readily available through ASR. So that is uh, something to keep the project realistically and not only look at oh, about five years we're going to get a big result or over ten years because uh, yeah, in theory it should be something which would already help us uh, at the moment. Uh, next one. Uh, that, that about uh, sum, sums it up. We wanted not speech to text, but we wanted the next level, the, the, uh, the, the, the translation part. Uh, now we are here, and now we have uh, something concrete, that uh, is speech to report web service, which is working, but as the title already summed up, we are not there yet. What the future brings us, uh, we don't know. <laughs> Next one? Yeah. <laughs> no, next one? Uh, really? Uh, <coughs> there more? No. <laughs> this is what we have for now. I left someone else, I left something else. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, had a, I had made a, a, a fantastic video <laughs> library. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, I, uh, uh, beforehand, I uh, sent a short survey to, uh, to some people. Uh, because uh, uh, to, to me it is interesting uh, to find out if the landscape is already uh, moving, uh, altering, or if it is, it is more, more, more of the same. Uh, so the question is where uh, is uh, your department or Senate in your country using the ASR? Well, I can sum up the results out of my head because they are so small. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, the Italian Parliament uses automatic speech recognition. <coughs> also, uh, if you have read uh, the latest household news, there was an article about uh, the Parliament in uh, Iceland, which had, uh, uh, to, my, to our uh, yeah, uh, surprise, uh, are more or less uh, entering the same route as we are now. They are cooperating with a uh, university and coming up with a kind of web service like, uh, like we. So that's very interesting. But those are the two uh, uh, working, w working services. And then, in, in second place, kind of, uh, we have uh, uh, some arguments which are uh, looking at, at, at the possibilities. So that is uh, the Netherlands. Also, uh, we know that the Flemish Parliament uh, wants to start a big project uh, and introduce uh, automatic speech recognition in a big way because of a personnel problem. They can get uh, enough uh, qualified personnel, so uh, ASR has to uh, be their uh, yeah, uh, big, big solution to about, uh, about everything. Um, and that's about it. So the landscape isn't uh, really, uh, really, really uh, uh, moving or, or altering in a, in, a, in a big way, which isn't uh, surprising if you uh, have to watch our presentation, I think. And now to the discussion. <laughs> Are there questions? How could you hear the, uh, the voice from the cabinet? Because, I mean, they sit behind you. And... You mean that they're sitting with their back to uh, the members of cabinet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Well, that's a, with their English. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, there's about, there's about a, a meter between them here and the place where where uh, where, uh, where the microphone is. But they uh, and don't, they don't take it, you know, speak without the permission or something. Uh, no, but, but, but these microphones, these four, they are uh, used for interjection and interruption, but only after the chair has allowed them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So there is some, uh, some, uh, some, some kind of uh, control. Uh, so it's not, not like that everybody starts uh, talking uh, together, but there is some crosstalk. Uh, when when uh, uh, somebody, somebody wants wants to ask a question but isn't permitted by the chair to ask the question, and then that per person remains persistent, even if it's the chair, it's the chair, I really want or have the right, have the right to ask the question, and the chair is the chair is uh, talking back and you get a discussion. That's also one reason why it's very nice to be dead center because then you can hear actually live the crosstalk because you hear the crosstalk only on audio. If, if a person normally cannot... Uh, so you, you don't have headphones? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So there are no headphones? We don't use headphones. Uh, uh, for, for, for the simple reason that if you use headphones, you cannot hear uh, all the sounds or interjections, uh, etc., etc., from people from where they are seated and not using the microphones. So somebody can, uh, can, can shout something and it has to be, uh, it has to be recorded before, for, for our report, because even if it's, if it's not, not official. So in the answer, you do not only just uh, report on uh, uh, what official speakers say, but also reaction to it. Okay. Uh, 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 as, as, as you can see, uh, there are no microphones where uh, the MPs are seated. So some of them have to run uh, about uh, 15 meters to be there and on time to ask a okay. question. So sometimes they have a kind of a shortcut and shout things from the place where they're seated. And then it's very uh, interesting for the reporter to actually hear because sometimes here a question is asked. And then uh, the answer the answer comes here, and yeah, the question isn't asked via the microphone, so it's an take. But in general, the discipline is quite high, and it's very common to speak through the chair. So only if the chair allows you, an interruption takes place. Since in Italy, MPs are not responsible. We have uh, a mic for every single a mic for every single MP. And uh, this uh, mic is switched on and off by a specific office uh, which receives the request for an MP to speak. And they switch uh, the mic on or off depending if there is somebody else speaking. So discipline is imposed in Italy thanks to uh, microphones for every single speaker. Okay, this is side information. <laughs> We have 1,000 views. <laughs> it is one of the largest parliaments in the world. Thank you, Carlo. <laughs> Thank you, Carlo. We do not go on. We will go on now. Oh, terrible. Sorry. It's a terrible noise. I can't help it. Next. No, I want to say something else if the oh. is uh, asking. Before moving to the before moving to the next speaker, I wanted to say, I wanted to stress something very important that Ekian said, meaning that the university told them that what they do is uh, translation, and it's not transcription. Um, uh, we call it diamesic uh, translation, uh, meaning translation from spoken language into written language because the two languages, even if they are part of the same language, they are two different codes, two different languages with two different grammars. So it is the same as translating from English into uh, Dutch. You're right, it's uh, an important remark. Thank you. Next. Next. The problem is that you are not 